In this video, we're going to take a look at the cell cycle, and more specifically cell division, and see how the cell is able to replicate itself. When we're talking about the cell cycle, uh, a couple things that we want to remember are some of the components of the cell theory. And the first of that is that cells develop from previously existing cells. And we're going to see how that happens today and, and uh, how that works. Um, the second is that uh, identical copy of the cell's DNA is passed along to the new cell. And so the DNA that's in the original cell is going to be passed on to our new cell, our copied cell, and it's going to be identical. And the third part, uh, and these last two here aren't necessarily part of the cell theory, but are important to, to note. And this set, last one here is important for the IV standards. Interphase is an active period in the life cycle. Um, when many metabolic reactions occur, the cell is carrying out its normal functions, um, it's, it's basically doing what it's supposed to be doing, um, and that may include protein synthesis, DNA replication, and an increase in the number of mitochondria and chloroplasts. That occurs as the cell is getting closer to actually dividing. And here's a nice image of our cell cycle. Um, you can see if we were to split this into four different parts, we've got our mitotic phase, and this is the phase of division. We'll talk about these in a little bit more depth in just a second. Um, we have a period of growth in normal metabolic roles. The DNA replicates, and then some more growth in preparation for division. And so the actual division of the cell is just a small por portion of the overall cell cycle. Now if we look at the stages of the cell cycle, the first part is interphase. And interphase takes up all of these different parts. So interphase is G1, S, and G2. And interphase accounts for about 90% of the cell's life cycle. So the majority of the time that the cell is in existence, it is in interphase. And during this period, the cell is dividing, um, uh, it, it grows, it's carrying out its normal functions. Um, if a human cell divided every once 24 hours, so if we were to take the life cycle of a cell and put it into a span of 24 hours, it would look something like this. Our G1 phase, um, when the cell grows and carry out its normal functions, metabolic roles, it would last about five to six hours. Um, and it's most variable in like between different types of cells. Our S phase of when chromosomes in the DNA are duplicated as the cell prepares to divide would take about 10 to 12 hours. So almost half of the time is spent in S phase of the cell's life cycle. And then the G2 phase would be about four to six hours. And this is when the cell is growing a little bit more, preparing to divide those mitochondria, chloroplasts, a few other organelles are starting to, to duplicate as well in preparation for the cell to divide. And the stages of the cell cycle um, can be broken into two main parts. The first is my mitosis, and the second is cytokinesis. And mitosis is broken down further into a couple different stages, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And it would take about approximately an hour for these four phases to occur if we were on a 24-hour scale, uh, as we mentioned in, in previously. And then cytokinesis is the final division of cells' uh, cytoplasm. It's really how these two cells are splitting right here. We have two cells that are splitting, and it, there's a formation of a cleavage furrow, which is this portion right here, which causes the cells to actually pinch in two. They're pulling apart from each other, and they're pinching in two, and this is happening in animal cells. So let's take a look at these stages a little bit more closely. In prophase, our chromatin fibers are condensing uh, to create observable chromosomes. So this is the first phase where we can actually see chromosomes. The DNA here uh, is actually condensing down into uh, chromosomes. The nucleoli um, dissolves, the nuclear membrane here begins to dissolve, um, and the identical, uh, the replicated DNA forms identical sister chromatids joined at the centromeres. Um, so chromosomes are going to pair up, and they're going to be joined at centromeres. We're going to take a look at these when we do some hands-on activities in class. We'll be able to get to play with these and get a better idea of, of the vocabulary and, and what's happening through these different stages. Um, spindle fibers begin to move and uh, to form and to move to opposite poles. Um, caused by the lengthening of the microtubules. So here's our spindle fibers right here. Uh, centrosome, uh, centrosome, there's two of them, and they have paired centrioles. And so we see these begin to form, and they're going to move to opposite ends of the cell, opposite ends of the pole. Uh, and these microtubules are what we're going to help pull those chromosomes apart in, in our later stages. In metaphase, uh, the centrosome uh, at, are at opposite poles. So here's our centrosome um, on either sides of the cell. Our chromosomes uh, have lined up at this kind of imaginary line uh, called the metaphase plate. Um, it, and at this point the chromosomes have lined up so that they are ready to be pulled apart. 
Um, the spindle microtubules attach to the central mirror on each chromosome, and that's what's actually going to pull them apart. And the nuclear envelope is, is by this point, totally broken up um, and is, is basically pretty much dissolved. In anaphase, our sister chromatids separate to become individual chromosomes. So these are actually separating, they're pulling up away from each other. And the microtubules are what are providing that, or what are uh, allowing those chromosomes to be separated. We refer to them to, uh, as daughter chromosomes because they're identical chromosomes and they're moving towards the opposite end of the pole. So these are our uh, daughter chromosomes here. The cells begin to elongate, uh, they begin to pinch and pull apart from each other. And both ends of the cell, or both sides of the cell, are going to have the exact same or the equivalent DNA. They're going to have copies of the DNA um, at the end of this phase. This is a very quick phase. Um, it happens uh, very quickly. It's one of the fastest of all of the different stages. In telophase and cytokinesis, uh, this is really when the cells are, are finishing the division and splitting between one of another. And so the nuclear envelope will begin to uh, reform or re-surround the DNA. Uh, chromosomes become less condensed, and so they actually begin to unwind. Uh, and, and then we begin to see two daughter nuclei that are going to form on either end of the cell um, in our developing cells. The cleavage furrow that I discussed a little bit earlier forms an animal cell which pinches the cell in two, and so these two cells are going to pinch in two and, and become one, uh, excuse me, two different separate cells. And so here's a separate video that, that shows the whole process of this, and I'll link this on the video so that you can watch this as well, uh, showing all of the different steps in a real cell uh, under a microscope. Um, a couple other things to add before we finish up our discussion of cell division. Uh, daughter cells are identical, and so uh, our homologous chromosomes. Um, here we have one, let's say the blue is from dad, uh, red, pinkish colors from mom. This would be in a normal human cell or a normal organism cell. Well, this DNA, these chromosomes replicate, and so now there's duplicate versions of them. We've got one, two, one, two from mom and from dad. And then after mitosis, these two separate cells, they get one of each, just like we started with at the beginning. They've got one of each. And so for a short period of time, at least in human cells, uh, we have 46 chromosomes. For a short period of time, when these um, duplicated or replicated uh, chromosomes are all in the single cell, there's 96 chromosomes. And so that way, when the my, uh, mitosis is completed and the cell division sequence is, is completed, each cell has 46 chromosomes. So we begin with 46 chromosomes in human cells, and we also end with 46 chromosomes in human cells. A normal cell has 46 chromosomes. Uh, that would be referred to as diploid. Um, each chromosome is exactly replicated during RS phase. Uh, as I said, a temporary total of 92 chromosomes. If there's an error that occurs during this replication, that would be a mutation. We'll talk about mutations a little bit more uh, later on in the semester and in the year. When cells divide, each new cell obtains one of two copies. So what we're seeing happening is each of our new cells has the exact same DNA information, and they have an exact copy of, of each other. Uh, and our resulting two cells have the identical genetic information. There's a couple of other mechanisms that involve mitosis, some, some ways that it's used. Growth, for example, uh, an organism that's growing needs, to needs cells to divide. And so if you think about a, hu uh, a human, a baby that's developing inside the, um, inside the womb, those cells are dividing and that organism, that developing fetus is growing. And so by the cells dividing, uh, it's able to increase in size. Um, think about a child growing, it grows taller through cell division, um, allows for cell differentiation as well. Embryonic development, mitosis occurs frequently in a developing embryo. Um, asexual reproduction, some organisms reproduce asexually. That means that they're reproducing without sex. And so these organisms, so these organisms are reproducing without uh, sex, and, and because of that, they're identical genetic copies of one another. And this can be advantageous in some environments. Uh, if it's a very stable environment or if the environment isn't changing, uh, finding a, a, a mate to mix up those genes is not necessarily empirical for the organism's survival. And so uh, reproducing asexually is, is more advantageous in that type of situation, that type of environment. Another process involving mitosis would be tissue repair. Let's say you get a cut, it result, results in the loss of some skin cells, which must be replaced. Uh, damage or loss, tissues require new cells. And so mitosis uh, through cells dividing and growing allows this to happen. This is a basic introduction to cell division. We'll get some more practice with actually walking through the steps in uh, class when we work with some models and, and, and take a closer look at the vocabulary.